Oh my goodness, I just gave my aide a heart attack. Y'all don't know, I, I, um, I'm recovering from an injury. Hence, uh, I don't usually, I'm usually equipped with a stiletto. So I needed some assistance today, and I thank you for that. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that introduction, and all of you for the warm welcome. Uh, Gerald, I just want to thank you for your leadership at the helm of this dynamic organization, which provides an empowering platform for our youth to build from. Let's please salute uh, this visionary, this courageous pioneer. Uh, many thanks to the Europe Board of Trustees, the Leadership Council, and staff for your commitment to these amazing young people and for your ongoing tireless efforts. You know, Europe really is a critical vehicle uh, which provides an important pathway in forming and strengthening the professional opportunity for so many young people, providing a sustainable pathway to career development and financial independence. This would not be possible were it not for your collective efforts. But I want to use another word other than just collective. I want to underscore collective, but also the word intentional. Because you are intentional about what you do. And we need more people like you. You know, the upliftment, the advancement, the betterment of community and young people does not happen organically. It only happens when we are intentional about that work, with the clear understanding that the health of the individual, the family, and the community are inextricably linked. If we don't focus intentionally on the collective we, we'll either participate in synchronized drowning, but if we can align our hearts, our feet, our minds, in the collective upliftment, betterment, and advancement, we all benefit. So we need to hand clap on this intentional collective effort that is, that is Europe. Thank you. All right, now before I get into my remarks, I do uh, want to do a special shout out uh, to my date this evening, uh, a VIP in the audience, uh, my 91-year-old grandfather, <laughs> Reverend James Eccles from Chicago, Illinois, flew in to surprise me. I'm turning 42 tomorrow, and he came to surprise me for my birthday. Granddaddy, thank you for being here. Uh, I owe you for my life, and uh, we all owe you for our freedoms. My grandfather was a World War II uh, airman in Korea, so we thank you. Now, you know, it never fails. I have had the distinct honor and humbling experience to share big stages with big people. And I'm always more calm than I am right now. Whenever I know I'm going to share a few words with young people, I am nervous. I mean, upset stomach, knees knocking, sweaty palms, nervous. Why? Because I never want to squander an opportunity. Every moment with you, I want to do it justice. I want to do right by you, build with you, meet you where you're at, provide you with some insight and fuel for the rest of your life's journey. And I never, ever want to patronize you or speak condescendingly to you. You see, although you are many years my junior, in 2016, all or most of you are saddled with questions, burdens, and challenges that belie your chronological age. It keeps me up at night that many of you have sleepless nights, preoccupied minds due to adult worries. Now, my assessment of the stressors of your life is not abstract or hypothetical. Looking out at all of you, I see, of course, great promise in each of you. But I can't pretend I don't also see pain. In your eyes, on your faces, I see your story, my story, our shared struggle. 
Now, as a policymaker, I strive to dismantle what, what I know are significant and very real access barriers to quality education, sustainable and satisfying career, income, and wealth building opportunities. No doubt there are many systemic, institutionalized, gender, racial, cultural, language, and cost barriers to your realizing your God-given potential. I would never give short shrift to or underestimate how formidable these barriers are. However, I can summarize what the biggest barrier is, and it doesn't discriminate. After poring over many an academic journal in brief to study the matter, I can say with confidence, the biggest barrier is life. Life happens. Life happens to all of us. Life happened to me, to my mother, and my father too. My father and his five siblings were orphaned early in life due to the premature deaths of his parents, of their parents. As the eldest, my father struggled to survive and was forced to grow up quickly, a man-child in a promised land. He was smart and resourceful and did whatever he had to to survive. Now the traumas of his life, in particular the loss of his beloved mother, drove him to self-medicate through drugs. He committed crimes to support his addiction and was in and out of prison and my life for 15 years. Life got in the way. The derailments, the distractions, the drama, and the dysfunction, life got in the way. Once sober, my father, who was always brilliant, attained two advanced degrees while incarcerated and later pursued his PhD. He went on to become a professor of journalism and a published author. Life derailed his promise and potential, but didn't permanently defer it. My mother, my Shiro, God rest her soul, was the smartest person I've ever had the privilege to know. She was well-read, intellectually curious, and an intentional, lifelong learner. My mother could and would engage anyone in conversation and was a spirited debater, especially when it came to politics, foreign policy, or social justice issues. Due to a perfect storm of life events, my mother, who was ambitious and popular, excelled in high school academics and sports. She didn't complete her college education. That was the first of many disappointments for my mother due to the disruption of life. Years later, while my father battled his demons, my mother was forced to raise me alone. She never complained. My mother, like many parents, abandoned the full pursuit of her own dreams, investing all of her energy, focus, and money and resources to ensure that I would realize my own. Early on, I was acutely aware of the dream trade-offs and sacrifices made by my mother. As a child, I verbally pledged to do two things for her. I would pay for her one day to return to college, and I would buy her a red convertible. My mother was a bold and free spirit. Any Sagittarians in this room here? Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. My mother was a bold and free spirit, and any time we saw a convertible on the road, she coveted it. As a child, when I would feel my mother burdened by a daily or newly emerging pressure, I daydreamed about her riding that red car with no destination in mind, just the wind blowing in her hair and the open road ahead of her. My mother made great financial sacrifices, often risking eviction from our home to send me to an elite private school because our neighborhood school was an underperforming one. She didn't want me to be denied or deprived any opportunity in life, which I endeavored to pursue. Now, I know that she wouldn't have had it any other way, but I still harbor guilt and some sadness about the brilliant woman who, in order to provide for me, took on jobs that rarely inspired her or financially rewarded her according to her worth. 
After a valiant battle, leukemia stole my mother from me at the age of 63. I never got to send her to college or to buy her that red convertible. Life happened. Because of my mother, I received an exemplary elementary and high school education. That education providing me with an incredible foundation, a well of knowledge and values which I draw from today. Unfortunately, although I was accepted and did briefly attend college, like my mother, I never completed my degree. My mother lost her job, was diagnosed with cancer, and I was a victim of sexual assault while an undergrad, forcing me to drop out. Life happened, the worst of it, the underbelly of it. I suspect each of you have experienced and overcome many of the same issues or worse. Because life happens, you've experienced many starts and stops. Maybe you work two or three jobs to provide for your family. Maybe you are a young parent. Maybe you are a caregiver to a sick or ailing loved one. Maybe you've experienced a traumatic event in your life that made it impossible for you to see a way out and a future for yourself. Or maybe, just maybe, you were tired. Maybe you made everyone and everything else in your life a priority over yourself. Or maybe no one encouraged you. Or maybe you didn't encourage you. But at some point in your journey, your circumstances, thank you, Europe, and your mindset changed. And it put you on a pathway to this moment to today. Life happened. But you are here, and you inspire me. You have finished, you have completed what you began. There was a time I didn't think I would make it. I was temporarily derailed. But I didn't give up, I couldn't give up. My mother's love awesome, extraordinary, unconditional, and fierce, further evidence of the power of love in our lives. For those reasons, Granddaddy, like the sermon has said, it's a reminder to me that delays are not a denial. And that is why Today, I am a history maker, a change agent, a social justice partner with the awesome honor and responsibility of representing you. Dr. Maya Angelou once said, I can be changed by what has happened to me, but I refuse to be reduced by it. You, each and every one of you, embodies the spirit of this quote. Life happened, and it will continue to. Distractions, derailments, delays. But you did it. You made it. You've challenged stereotypes, defied odds, and this is only the beginning. <laughs> Graduates. Congratulations, I expect, we expect greatness from you. Thank you.